something, though, that I am really excited about that I think women are kind of smartening up to this. What what would the word be? Smartening. Wisening up. Wisening mm-hmm. up. I think women are wisening up to this. And I love this new celibacy movement. I I mean, I'm, I'm sure you've heard of this love because it. this is what you do. <laughs> we love celibacy. We, we have a lot of religious cel- people, like like priests and religious on the podcast, and they are obviously celibate for life. But yeah, I, le- I mean, don't be be celibate unless it's with your spouse. Yeah. Great and, plan. And I, I think it's also a lot of women think that, oh, all because I, you know, I'm not a virgin. Mm-hmm. Why? I don't need to practice this. I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to kind of keep doing things the way that I've been doing things, but it's not effective. Why is it not effective to sleep with someone when you're dating them? Absolutely. So I mean, studies have shown that when women sleep with the men, they release oxytocin, which they release this huge spike of oxytocin. And this is what happens when you have a baby and when you bond with the child. These are the hormones. They're so strong. So when a woman has sex with a man, she's releasing all these hormones and now she is bonded to this guy, even if the date didn't even go very well and she doesn't even really like the guy. It's And this is, this is a huge huge issue issue. So before she sleeps with him, she's thinking very clearly, but then after she sleeps with him, she is hijacked by hormones. So, and men, the thing is when men sleep with women, they release a cocktail of other hormones, but it's not oxytocin. Um, and actually studies have been done that show how men fall in love. And it's actually in the absence of having sex, they really they need to hit a certain peak of vasopressin, um, and this is that this is a hormone. It has to hit a level in order for them to then fall in love. But the only way that they can hit this level is if they're not having sex with the woman. So it's kind of this, like women have been fed this lie. They've been fed this lie that is that is keeping them single, keeping them traumatized by going through, you know, so many, you know, really intense, uh, intense experiences. But I, our rule is, and it is, you know, it is a rule. We say, no sex until monogamy at the minimum, at the minimum, because we don't only work with Catholic men and women. So we can't be like, no sex until marriage. We would have like, you know, less clients, even though, I mean, you know, um, more and more women that are not even super religious are are inviting that into their lives. Um But yeah, I mean, I think a woman that is a born again virgin or that is, you know, says, you know what, I'm going to do things differently. Um, We've seen more successes with like objectively speaking with those women in 12 years. Sometimes it's that piece of advice that brings them from being going from one long relationship to the next Mm -hmm. into getting married. And getting their ultimate meeting that person and being clear and being able to let go of those men that don't have good intentions, that are only looking for a physical connection or that just don't want to marry them. And they're enjoying the physical connection. They're enjoying their company, but they're that's not their wife. So I think that there's a lot of hope. Even if a woman is not a virgin, you can be born again. I mean, be born again. I think that that is a beautiful thing. Um, and we've just seen objectively so many successes with women that 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 do this. I think it's such a good point. I mean, it's and you're, you're sharing it in such a relatable way because it's even separate from the moral law of, you know, sex is designed for marriage. There's a reason beyond behind the moral law. It's a reason that's built into even our bodies, like you're saying. And we want people to be happy. (laughs) We want them to be free and loved and to be able to love. And I think it's very powerful to consider that a lot of women are running into these situations where, and and men, they're in these long-term relationships. Like you say, there's not commitment for life. There's not openness to life children. And you spend your 20s this way, you get into your 30s this way, and you wake up and you're like, I want to be married. Mm -hmm. I want kids. But you've spent years in these long-time relationships, sometimes living together, sexually active. You're all bonded up. Bonded up. But it's not- You're pair bonded. But it's a a fake relationship Mm -hmm. because you're pair bonded, but you can't 
rely on that bond. You're not committed for life. Yeah. And then also there's a children dynamic where a lot of these women, they want, they've always thought, yeah, I'll have a, I want kids or, you know, I'd, I'd like to consider that. And then they're in their thirties and they're worried all of a sudden, can I find this man? Like, can I have children? Do you have a lot of clients who are worried about their fertility and the ability to have children? We tend to get successful women. Um, and a lot of successful women in their typically our age range begins for clients at around 28 and then all the way up to like 40, 41. That's really the strongest. That's where we have the most female clients. Men skew a little bit older. However, we do get men that are very marriage-minded and they're in their 20s. Um, they can be in their 20s and 30s. It's fine. But generally speaking, um, especially in a major city like LA, you tend to get um, the men and women feel that that they're ready mm-hmm. once their career is settled. And then they're like, then they're looking around and they're like, well, where's my husband? Where's my wife? Where is she? You know, I've been doing it in this way and it hasn't been working. Um, so yes, we do get a lot of women that once they hit, I would say like 35, 36, 37, mm-hmm. um, they, they are, they do have the fertility is on the forefront. Um, and then the then the the pressure is a bit greater um, because you're, I mean, you're dating with the intention of marriage and the goal. But I think a lot of women in their 20s, when you say you're dating with the intention of marriage, a lot of them are not dating with the intention of marriage, just in a in the society, in a well, secular I think, society. I think, do you think that's because a lot of women in their 20s, they think we have all the time in the world. And they're having fun. I mean, I have heard some people say, like, this is actually a great time to be a woman uh, in terms of your career options are endless, your educational options are endless. Everyone's raw, raw, girl boss, you do you, whatever you want to do. And so you can kind of have this whole, the world is my oyster mentality. But then at the same time, you hit your 30s, like you're saying, and you're, you're a lot of these women are struggling. What's your advice? Do you think women should be much more open to love in their 20s if they if they see themselves getting married and not be waiting and waiting and waiting. I think that everyone has a everyone has their own journey. Um however, if you want to experience the least amount of trauma in your 20s, I think shifting the mindset from dating to date and to have fun to dating with the intention of marriage and dating in a way that is honoring your boundaries and that is is really you know if a man is showing that he's not a potential if you can't see this man as your future husband and if he lacks these qualities that are essential for your future husband it's getting out of that situation mm-hmm. um i i i'm a big believer in encouraging women in their 20s to date intentionally I I also I feel like women kind of fall in between the a girl boss and a trad wife. And I think a lot of women are kind of in the middle because I think a lot of women have these